evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Wednesday version of the Sports Exchange. We're following a dynamite broadcast over with the Pundits Fund. We had Tori Harmon, who was on Inside the Pigskin. We figured we'd give Tori Harmon a lot to do this week. You got two appearances, and both of them were, as Dick Vitale would say, awesome, baby. Yes, it gets worse, even if I'm drinking Canada Dry tonight, not Mountain Dew, although I had plenty of that beverage earlier today. With that said, let's talk about the Dream Team. And to my left is Candy Ebling. Welcome back. Thanks, Scott. Great to be here. Uh, great, great to have you. You'll be on from time to time. But boy, this show is custom made for you, Candy, let me tell you. So for all you Wisconsinites are out there listening, stay tuned. All right. With that said, smoking Jeremy B. has been smoking all week, and he's going to keep smoking everywhere he can. Welcome back, J.B. Hey, glad, glad to be here. Glad to talk some sports with you guys. And... Let's see what else comes up. You just make sure your peeps out there keep subscribing to this channel because we're building everything here for both of them as well as Sideline Sports as well. Subscribe to their YouTube channel. Speaking of Sideline Sports, we have another JB in the office, and that is JB Ellis. What's going on? Another good week. Oh, yeah. And next is Jacob Christner. Well, long time no see about... 30 seconds? Eh, 26. What the hell, oh, right? And, and then one thing about smoking Jeremy B is he belongs in the Mad Men era because you could smoke back then. So, <laughs> hey, you know. But... <laughs> and last yeah. one, not least, the guy who got AARP before any of us, it was George Icar. <laughs> oh, Hello. Hey, good to see you all. Uh, good to see you. All right, well, we have a busy agenda tonight, and I'm going to get to it. We have a lot. You know, we have football. We've got Sports Time of the Week. And you know what? We're also introducing a new segment called the Non-Sports Topic of the Week. We want to prove that there's a little bit more to being inside the line, so we'll go outside the lines. And if ESPN, I took it. Also, be it, you steal everybody else's stuff anyways. And whoever's operating the chat room, thankfully, I won't have to worry about it. All I get to do is use this thing called the vocal cords. And I'm going to get vocal right Dom. now. And, Hi, Dom. Um, Hi, Dom. What's going go. on? So, whoa, look at that. Mark Mancini. Oh, I guess no show tonight, huh, Mark? Thanks for being on this one anyways. But at least he's alive. Mancini Media in the building. Keep up the great work. We're just getting started, Mark, but I like the way you're thinking ahead. Okay. All right, so let's go to our first topic. Joe Burrow pays twenty pays for 20 families at Cincinnati Children's Hospital to receive mental health treatment. That's a great story, isn't it, Candy? That is, that's an awesome story. You know, May is mental health month, so it's a great time to really bring awareness to mental health. And it's good to see that, you know, the NFL players paying it back and paying it, you know, helping the the, the people that need the help the most because maybe they couldn't afford, you know, the therapy and everything like that. So it's awesome job, Joe. All right, smoking. Joe Burrow just proves he's a class act, even though he looks like an adult version of Macaulay Culkin. That was good. I can't top that one, but the hat stays on. Nice try, pal. All right, J.B. Ellis, this is a topic I wanted last week, but I had too much to get to, but I was determined to get it in tonight. You're Listen, I mean, that's part of what they, you know, these athletes should be doing. It's not a requirement, but, you know, it's nice to see. We work, uh, Sideline Sports for the NFL alumni. We have Dave DeRoche, who is uh, one of our hosts. The man does nothing but give back. He's a, he's involved in so many different things. Last night we had Mike Sherrard on. You know, he's involved in so many different programs. And to see that Joe Burrow's doing it, because right now he's in the league and basically one of the faces of the league, one of the young, great quarterbacks. And the fact that he's taking the time and effort to do that says a lot about his character, you know, and I'm glad to see it. Okay, Jacob. Oh, Every single time I think about the initiatives we're seeing with mental health right now, I think about Ricky Williams and how good he could have been if he's allowed to smoke a little bit of weed, allowed to relax, and allowed to have some therapy. And then when I think about something like this, how many other players did not bring it up? Like, see, he brought it up. How many didn't bring it up? How many big-time names out there could we have had? If we would have had the mental health deal then, and guess what? Dak Prescott's into it now. Joe Burrow's into it now. And I'm pr we're proud of all of them because now we're going to see a new era of athlete. <laughs> okay, Joe. Um, yeah, I think it's great uh, that, you know, I've seen it here even in Detroit where we've got athletes stepping up, 
you know, Matthew and Kelly Stafford have done a great job here in Detroit before they moved to L.A. Uh, Mitch Album, the columnist, the national broadcaster, has done a great job. And Joe Burrow, hey, hats off, man. You did a great job, too. And uh, we, we, can, we can certainly use the dollars and the involvement. And giving back to the community is so very important, like you guys said. Okay. All right, next topic. Candy, candy, we all knew Candy would love this one. But Green Bay will host the 2025 NFL Draft. Well, might as well start with you, Candy. The Packers expect this event to have a $94 million impact on the state of Wisconsin. That is just awesome for Green Bay. And let's face it, Green Bay, they named the NFL trophy the, the Vince Lombardi trophy for a reason. Because of, you know, yes. Oh, stop rolling your art eyes, Jeremy, there. They named it because they, they thought the wrong guy named the Super Bowl the Super Bowl. It was Hank Stram, not Vince Lombardi. Oh, come on, Jeremy. <laughs> this is it. This is Candy's moment in the sun. Like, I got to give her a little crap because she talked to me. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? You don't want to get on her bad side, man. Go on. Hey, we're having fun. We can go back are. and forth. Anyways, they put... It's the frozen tundra. We don't get the Super Bowl because nobody wants to come. We don't have the hotel capacity, honestly. I'm kind of surprised they're getting the draft. I'm really happy they're getting the draft because I read someplace that they expect 300,000 people to come in. I don't know where they're all going to stay, but hey, it's awesome. And I love the fact that they, they're moving it from city to city and changing it up to let some of these cities that don't get the Super Bowl and those kind of things. I think it's awesome. I think it's great. Well, the only thing I'll say about it is this. Okay, if you're going to hold an NFL draft, you hold it in Title Town, where these kids, if they don't know about the history of football, they'll learn it quick because you have a Packers Hall of Fame nearby anyways. And who wouldn't want to play in Title Town anyways when you talk about the history? So if you have a guy out here that's in a situation where, you know, Green Bay, Man alive, I can't believe the history of this game here. And I could possibly play for them. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. I mean, if you've never <laughs> been to Lambeau Field, that's a bucket list. I wow. So to be drafted at Lambeau Field, you know what? To me, whether you're in the sixth round, seventh round, that's just a thrill to knowing in that location. Don't worry about Hotels are what they are. But I just think it's unbelievable. So, all right, Jeremy, now that you're laughing, let's see if you can keep a straight face over this one. Uh, the only reason why Green Bay got it is they're probably going to have a top five pick next year. Oh, Lordy. All right. All right, J JB, the other one. Listen, I'm a little disappointed that Green Bay was chosen next year because it's in Detroit. It's two NFC North teams in a row. I think they should have spread it around a little bit more. I'm glad Maybe. it's going to be a Green Bay. I mean, I like the idea. It's cool that they're moving it around. And I think it'll be fun in Green Bay. I just think that you know, move it a couple of years, send it to somewhere different before you come back to, to Green Bay. But whatever, it's there. It's going to be a fun event. I hope I'm going to be there. And it's going to be probably one of the, the better drafts, I think, out of the locations they could have chose. You know, I think it's it's probably, uh, out of all the cities, one of the funnest ones to see. But wait, before you go any further, uh, they did L, L, uh, Las Vegas, and then they did Kansas City. So they're staying on track. They're doing two teams from each division. Still don't like the idea, though. I mean, I get what you're saying, and they did it previously. But, uh, you know, I think you got to move it around a little bit more, you know, spread it. Oh, I agree. You know, I agree. But I'm just saying you know, they're just following the trend. Yeah, and, you know, but it is what it is. Okay, Jacob. Oh, it's an exceptional – it's an exceptional way of promoting because Jordan loves garbage. He's going to be to garbage. They're going to be terrible. He's going to be benched. And then they're going to be able to show that whole thing when they have that pick. They're going to be able to show that whole detail. And then that whole crew just going nuts when they get that quarterback that they want in the draft. And that place is going to go insane because it is because it is Lambeau. It is Green Bay. And they are there. And that's just the way that thing was. So <laughs> it's like good for them on that. And with small towns – I'm from a small town. When a small town gets a big name, I mean, I'll just say this. My town in going from Quincy into Menden got Donald Trump for one of these little deals, okay? He brought in 
it filled the hotels all the way through the three uh, through a three city area and got all the restaurants filled and brought a ton of money. When a small town like Green Bay gets something like this, it's going to build a lot of money, and I'm happy for them. All right, George. Yeah, I wasn't totally surprised because I know that they said when Detroit got it that Green Bay was one of the runners up. So, but I know what you're saying, JB. Uh, and if you toss Chicago in there, which had it a couple of years back, that's three out of the four NFC North towns that are going to have it. And that is a bit much for me too. But I, Green Bay definitely deserves it because a point like Candy made earlier, you know, they can't host the Super Bowl because of the weather. And, you know, they haven't, there's been, there's really no other, well, I shouldn't say that the NFL owner meetings could go there, but that's not, that's not for the fans. Um, but, you know, Green Bay deserves that title town and also the fact they never had it before. Okay. I've got to go ahead, Jeremy. You want to add something? Um, to it? We, we got a couple of comments from Dom Darubis about these last two subjects. All right. So uh, go ahead. Uh, Dom Darubis says, if we're talking mental health, can we start up a GoFundMe for Antonio Brown? And then he also says, spread that 94 monthly, 94 million evenly among Packers fans who think that love is going to be anything better than Deshaun Kaiser. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Any other ones that you spotted, Jeremy? It's not that would... Packer fans, because remember, the Packer fans own the Packers, actually. They're the only NFL team that actually is owned by the people, not an owner. Remember that. Dan, Denzel, yeah, Denzel's got a comment too. He says Rogers is gone. Uh pack fans about to uh oh yeah, all aboard the love train. And his Thank next you, comment Denzel. says Jacob is it's derailed. It basically derailed. said Caleb Will Williams to Green Bay confirmed. I don't know. You gotta give Love a little bit of a chance. I mean, he hasn't had a good chance yet. I know. We all gotta slow it's down. It's just it's just fun to do it. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be the answer, but give give the guy a, a couple of games. I mean, he is following Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers. Like, we've had some really good quarterbacks for a long time, and we're used to that. But if you go back before that, we've had a lot, we had a lot of string of, of quarterbacks that weren't. Shit, Dan the Magic Man. We yeah, did. Yeah, I, I, yeah, don't laugh there because I was thinking about Don Mikowski. Yeah, I mean, right. He was actually. I know you like to laugh a lot, but some of these things that you can laugh your way through actually become really smart. And I'm, I'm just kidding with you, Jeremy. But no, I used to like Don Mikowski and so he actually played for the Lions for a while. You talk about a guy that could have been a backup till he was 60. This guy could have done it. Don hey, Mikowski hey, was unbelievable. Hey, Candy, you didn't like Lynn Dickey? <laughs> yeah. don't, forget, don't forget Matt Flynn for one yep. game. Yeah, yeah Dom, I, I mean, really Damon prefer to forget about that one. Okay, but that's fine. That's okay. Let's face it. Rogers is already injured. Oh my goodness! Imagine that. And so is Alan Lazard. I know both of them. And and uh, I feel bad for the rookie tight end that Washington got uh, the Commanders, uh, Amani Rogers. He actually tore his Achilles tendon today at OTAs That's in a cool. non-contact injury. Bad, bad. And also there's news out of the Titans camp. Safety Kevin Byard is not reporting because they asked him to take a pay cut. Interesting. Okay, let's go on to the NBA. I found this to be a very interesting point. I want to bring it up even though it's, it doesn't matter now. It mattered a while, about a week ago. The you know, as of game one of the Western Conference Finals, this was really an unbelievable mind-boggling stat that Nikola Jokic played in 60 career playoff games. 60 career playoff games. Meanwhile, LeBron James, 65 career conference finals games. Can you believe that? And guess who's going to the finals? Well, Joker is. But some of these stats have blown me away, and I think that's pretty interesting. So you know what I'm going to do? Jeremy, Jeremy, I'm going to start off with you, and Candy will get the last word on this. Okay. Um, Nikola Jokic, I, I think it's a great stat to bring up about how many conference finals LeBron has had right. and how many has he won? Six, maybe seven. Right. Just saying. And he it wasn't a gentleman sweep, as Tom is saying there. No, it was a brutal sweep. And why? The Nuggets actually play defense and have a more, way more well-rounded team. They let LeBron and AD do whatever they want and shut down everyone else. Okay. All right, JB. 
Listen, I mean, Joe Jokic has proved what a what a great player he is. LeBron's still a great player. He's just past his prime. And as a guy who's not a fan of LeBron, it was great to see, you know, him get a shot blocked at the end of the last game. You know, the, him lose the ball going up for a layup or a dunk. You know, because I'm not the biggest LeBron guy. But, you know, he had a great run. I don't think he's going to get back to the finals. He's going to hold on to play with his son, which, you know, it's pretty cool to think about. I mean, if I had a son and I could play in the NBA with him, and I was that good, because he's still probably better than most 25-year-olds out there, as much as he's declined. Just imagine that. He's still better than most 25-year-olds that are in the NBA. Oh, I, so, I'm not knocking him for that. Yeah, so, I mean, it's just good to see some new blood. It's good to see Denver finally make it, um, right. you know. And then we got Miami, who should should be there soon. You know, it's interesting to see uh, that, you know, South Florida just killing it. Yeah, they sure are, aren't they? All right, Jacob. Well, I'll tell you one thing here. If, um, if LeBron gets to play with Bronny, you will see by far, and it won't be because of his age, the low, his lowest. He'll be in the 15 to 17 point of the game deal because he will be dishing it off to his son all the time. He will just be doing that, trying to get him regardless of anything because what father wouldn't do that? What good father wouldn't do that? He wants to get his... He's going he's gonna to play one year and retire, and he wants to get his son up there. A good father does this. Would I do it? Absolutely. It's like we're going to – and in truth, I could see him 10, 15 points a game so he can give his son everything because that's what a father does. George? Um, yeah, I saw a quote there. LeBron said, I'm, I'm better than 90%, maybe even 95% of the guys in the NBA. So he certainly his ego is as big as it ever has been, and uh, – it's quite an accomplishment. I mean, you know, but it, let's not kid ourselves. It's very disappointing for him and the Lakers uh, to go out that way. And uh, the Joker, wow. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's going to be a great finals with Denver being the West Conference rep. And LeBron, so sorry. Maybe next year. And Candy. You know, LeBron recently signed a massive two-year deal. Do we really think that he's going to retire and not wait to play with his son. He has had a long, histor- I mean, historic career. He's been a great player. Whether I like him or not, and whether I like some of the things he's, you know, talks about and shoots off from the hip, but he is a great, he is one of the great players. And I, I think he's going to stay in it, even though there has been this retirement talk lately. I don't think he's, I think he's going to hold out. Now, my only thing would be is he his son comes up for the 2024 draft. Will he be worth his contract come at that point? And will a team be able to pay that much and get his son and everybody else? Because let's face it, he, he's going to want to stay in. The, he doesn't want to play for a team that isn't going to the playoffs. He wants to keep playing. So that'll be the question. Will he have to be one of these Tom Brady's that restructures the contract because you can't afford everybody else on the team? Well, well, first of all, Probably. I'm not putting any stock into James' retirement, and I'll tell you why. He was asked this question 32 minutes after the game, and you got to have a decent cooling down period knowing that you've exhausted yourself all year, and he needs a little time to regroup. I don't care whether he – didn't talk to the media later. So be it. You know, we used to watch soap operas and there's cliffhangers. You're going to have another one where every sports outlet can talk about it forever. No, I don't see him retiring at all. You think he's going to give up 90 to $100 million for the last two years? And, yeah, I think he's going to play with his sons. I'll never forget another legend that played with his sons as well. And that was Gordy Howe played with his sons, Mark and Marty, I believe. So that's – I, 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 to me, that – Retirement talk is hogwash. I'll see it when I believe it. Okay. And that's that. All right. We're going to go to another sport. Everybody got their piece of this action, right? Everybody? Did I leave anybody out? Good. Not. For a couple of comments here. All right. Uh, All right. Dom Darubis, one of two things happens. One, Bronny is a washout in college and barely barely makes the NBA. Two, whomever drafts Bronny refuses to acquire his egomaniac of a father from my lips to God's ears. Well, one thing about Don Rubis, you know, he doesn't lack a sense of humor. My, 
And last week, John Bonamago, okay, who was on our show earlier in the week, the former assistant coach, was highly complimentary of Don Derubis, okay? So mm -hmm. I have a feeling that every time we bring Johnny on, uh, Don will be Johnny on the spot. Yes, pun intended, okay? So with that said, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead, George Icorn, read his comments. Yeah, Will says the Nuggets in the mid-2000s used to run into the Lakers trying to go to the finals and would end up losing good that they overcame that obstacle this year. Thanks, Will. Okay, next topic. The Dallas Stars are in a slugfest, slugfest with Vegas. Hardly tell because they only trail Vegas three to nothing. But what was interesting about all of this is Coach Peter DeBo DeBoer holds the all-time record for game seven wins at seven and oh. Guess what? The only way he's getting to, to the Stanley Cup final, he's going to have to be 8-0 if they can get through this round. And we all talked about Doc Rivers' lack of success in Game 7s. Peter DeBoer is a classic example that he knows how to go out there and coach in Game 7s. Jeremy, game, if you've ever been to Game 7, I, George and I have been to a few. They're the most unbelievable game that I could ever imagine because it's all on the table. Well, well, give me your thoughts, Jeremy, about P Peter DeBoer. That's an excellent stat, but I'm going to take your take on that. In order to get there, he's got to start sweeping the team that's been sweeping them. Right. I mean, that's a tough task. That's a tall task. I don't know if it's been done in hockey very often where somebody comes back from three three down. It's actually, no been, done four, it's actually been done four times, and I'll get into that next week's episode. We have a lot of room to cover, but it's been done four times, I can tell you that. But, yeah, you're right. He's going to have to sweep uh, – a oh, very Vegas. good Las Vegas. Team. Yeah, and that, that may be hard. To we could end up with two expansion teams in the Stanley Cup Finals. Well, okay, we'll get to that in a moment. All right, but great minds think alike, Jeremy. You're, you're you're on a roll for all the right reasons. All right, JB. Listen, when you get in the hole three zero, you just got to play one game at a time. Right. It's a to totally different mindset. You have to turn everything off. It's all about winning the game you're playing, and you know the odds are you're not going to get through. You know, it's happened a few times, but, you know, you can't worry about anything else but winning the game you play that day. You know, it doesn't matter, good coach, bad coach. It's just one day. That's that's your life in the sport. And there's not much to it. It's just win that day. If you don't win that day, your season's over. So, you know. Well, in the NBA, the number is zero for 150 for this. Yeah, so, I mean, so. it's it's very rare to, to see in any sport, I mean. In the NBA, it's never happened, but you know it's it's ridiculous. Well, it's only happened in baseball once when the Red Sox beat the Yankees a fourth time in hockey. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear you, Scott. We won't talk about that. I, I gotta go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, you know, it's called Pedro so Martinez. Here. All right, well, that's okay, uh, Joe. I I know when you want to go out there, and uh, I'll take the, I'll I'll plead the fifth. That's okay. That does happen from time to time. So we'll go with from JB. To JC, the pundit. All right. Well, JB, JB's wishing Garrett Cole was what pitching that game seven. You know, and that for that. Uh, game. <laughs> that's just another name I don't like. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> let me let me say this. To win all of the four games, you gotta realize something. And that's why you have to also give LeBron all the credit in the world in Cleveland when they took out um, Golden State, when they took him out three to one, you call a time zone. How rough that is to be able to, have to take at least a couple of games in the middle of like two or three time zone thing. You're sleep deprived, you're the food deprived, every little detail. And just to give the fact that, um, just to get the fact that the Golden that Cleveland went into Golden State, going to their area with that kind of time zone, and everything and won it all, being down three one, that was amazing. And the, the, if Dallas would do it, unbelievably amazing because of the again time zone. That is very, very rough to be able to go into the West Coast and be able to do something like that. Like I said, sleep deprived, your uh, jet lag, everything like that. And then you've got to win four in a row. All right, George. Yeah, it is uh, quite amazing that the DeBoer record. Um, I wonder how our friend Scotty Bowman has been in game sevens. I'm sure he must be pretty good too, the former Red Wing coach. But it's awful hard to come back. I mean, you know, like – like you said, JB, you got to take one game at a time. You can't, if you're on that team, think about, oh my God, we got to win four in a row now or three in a row to get to the final sub game seven. No, you got to you got to take that that mentality, that mental 
approach. It's just that one game, which is what the Celtics did. I mean, they were down three, nothing. So they came back, they got one. Okay. But uh, you know, again, Dallas has created this whole, uh, there have been some exciting games though. Vegas is playing great hockey. Okay. Candy. I've often listened to Scott say how the Stanley cup playoffs are the hardest to, to championship to win. And that's because hockey is a tough physical sport to go down. Oh, three and think you're going to come back and win would be a monumental feat. But like JB said, one game at a time, don't think about what was in the past. Concentrate on the game that you're playing and take it one game at a time. Like George said, the Celtics did it last night. One of my coworkers is a huge Heat fan, and he's like, oh, I hope they, you know, get them last night. And I said, to be honest with you, I'm not sure that that's a good thing for the Heat. Yes, Denver already clinched it, and they're already in. But the problem with that is now they have how many days of rest that sometimes that when you have so many days of rest in between a different series, you get sloppy. You you start off slow. I've seen, and I'll say this, the Packers have done it way too many times. <laughs> sometimes you just need that rep, repetition. You know, there's a reason why they play a best of seven series. You have to win all four. So you never know. You get you get, Dallas could come up. They could win a couple. You just never know who gets hot. Yes, Vegas has been playing very tough, very hot right now. But there's a reason why you play all games. Yeah, I think the major reason why I brought this on the broadcast tonight is what Peter DeBoer has done to be seven and zero in Game Sevens is impressive in its own right for sure. So, all right, well, our sports time of the week. I've been waiting to do this for a long, long, long time. Is Detroit. Oh, I wonder how many people on this broadcast are from the Mitten State. Well, Jeremy, give me your thoughts about Detroit on a scale of 1 to 10 and why they're where you're at. Well, they are, what, a six-port team? To, uh, stick, a six-port town, to basically. Very, very passionate fan base. Some to the point where they're almost ludicrous, some to the point where they're actually very intelligent, and other ones are just somewhere in between. You have to say they're at least a nine. Okay. Just because of the fan bases. Okay. First for me, JB. I'm going to go with Jeremy on this between a nine and nine and a half. There's such a rich history when you look at Detroit sports. You got the Pistons. You know, the bad boys, they they were phenomenal in their day, and it looks like they're finally starting to get back where they're rebuilding. The Tigers, you know, such a rich rich history for over 100 years. You know, the Red Wings, who won how many Stanley Cups over the last couple of decades? 11. And, you know, well, not in total, just over the last couple of decades. You know, they're, they're, it's just a fun city. You guys have a lot of great teams with a lot of rich history. So, and the fans are phenomenal. You know, they stuck by these teams through a lot of down years over the last few years for, for most of them. You know, the Pistons are on a, were on a down streak. The Tigers have been horrible for many years at this point. So they may hope, they look like they're starting to turn it around this year. They're playing a lot better than what they have been. Um, the Red Wings, uh, they're not really playing too well. They weren't too good this year. But, you know, I think it's a, a great city, great fan. So I definitely say nine, nine and a half. What about you, Jacob? Oh, 10. As much as anything else, as much as all the Red Wings take my blues out so many <laughs> times in my high school years. <laughs> as much as anything. But you got to think about this. The aura of just the city of Detroit. You have areas like Six Mile, Eight Mile. You've got those type of things. Just imagining driving down, driving down eight mile, you know, that sort of deal. I mean, and those fans are crazy. And it's like, and they fill it and they'll fill everything. And the thing about it is the fact that you almost felt sorry that they did not get, um, they didn't get Wemanyama because just everything, because it, that it would have just been phenomenal with that fan base. And they're already so happy with Dan Campbell right now. They're already so happy with Dan Campbell. And what thing is, it's like after all these years and after all the struggles that the city had, Detroit is starting to come back, and then the sports is the reason why. 
Amen. Amen there. Okay, I George. knew that was going to happen, Dom. I knew that was going to happen when he got sent in the first place. Dom says the Red Wings are trending up. Stevie Y is headed in the right direction. Uh, I know this comes as a shock maybe to some of you, but I, I but I have to lower it to an eight, and I'll tell you why. Detroit baseball fans are not supporting this team as they used to. And I know you can say all you want about, well, they're being smart. Well, yeah, they are. But a true baseball town like St. Louis, like Boston, like Cubs, uh, Cubsville, they come no matter what. In Detroit, they will not do that for the Tigers anymore. They have turned a deaf ear on the Tigers. They are struggling mightily to get fans to come to that ballpark. Um, you, you can look at the attendance figures the last couple of years. It has not been good. Overall, yeah, the Lions, of course, are going to sell out every time. Pistons have gotten a little bit better attendance-wise. Red Wings typically sell out. But, no, I'm going to go with eight. And, like I said, the the weight that brought it down one point for me is the is the lack of the Tigers' attendance. What about you, Ken? As much as this might pain, pain me. No, I'm just kidding. I would probably give it a nine and George and I agree, but, and I, part of, I think the Tigers problem is, is it's not a historic ballpark. They're not playing well. They did put it downtown, which is great. But one of the smartest things Milwaukee did was put a dome over it. So you are always guaranteed a game. One thing I, I can tell you is in, in Milwaukee, because they're guaranteed a game, there's, bus loads of people that will come from all over the state to go see a game. Whereas in Detroit, now that you don't have a dome over that, you don't know if there's, you're not promised a game. So any other parts of the state, they are not going to take a bus trip and say, Oh, let's go to the Tigers game because there might not be a Tigers game. Good point. Mm -hmm. Um, The Red Wings, they have, they made the playoffs how many 25 years in a row. And now they've been on a downwards they're trending back up now again, but they've been down for a couple of years and haven't made the playoffs. But they're iconic. They're one of the original six. Like, how do you not, you know, put them up there? The Lions, yes, they haven't been very good. And let's face it, they're one of the only teams that have not made it to the Super Bowl. But they are trending. I mean, they're trending up. <laughs> they're predicted to be number one in the NFC North this year. Um, mm-hmm. It'll be interesting to see. Obviously, there's been some changes within the division, but they're trending up. The Pistons, yeah, they're they they're the bad boys was way back. They haven't been good, very good in the last number of years. Uh, but they play in they play in Little Caesars, which is a very nice arena, though too. The Lions are trending high. The Lions are trending high enough to bite some kneecaps. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, that I was kind of waiting for that, but all right, here's my overall view. Detroit's a 10, no doubt about it, really. I've been in around a lot of sports towns around the country. South Florida is a bandwagon one if I ever saw one. It's hard to draw in any warm weather climate to begin with because there's too many things to do. Red Wings, 11 Stanley Cups, once upon a time, Dead Wings, 25 years in a row making the playoffs and four titles. Tigers, great tradition, no ifs, ands, or buts. Pistons have a a few titles under their belt. Lions, you know what, to me, say what you want about their success or lack there of it, but you even sniff a contender in there, they're going to sell the darn thing out. It's so football frenzy. So uh, it's it's an easy one for me, 10. Not because I'm from there. Probably a lot of it has more than, oh, give me that candy. I, I've been to a lot of sports towns around this country, and I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. But this is one of the best. Okay. Uh-huh. Dom DeRubis has a comment about the Pistons there. The Pistons are on the worst four-year stretch in team history. Yet we moved the coach to the front office. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah, sure he's got. What. I'm pretty sure he's got dirt on Tom Gores. Yeah, but you know what, Dom, lay off this one. Dwayne Casey's a good basketball man. He really was. It's not his fault. He was dealt with a bunch of jokers. Okay, but and not Nikola Jokic. All right, so let's go ahead and move on. I wish. Yeah, right. No, I, yeah. I like Dwayne Casey. I think he was. And it just goes to show you what a sham the NBA draft lottery is to begin with, how they could slide the four. But I, I'm not, sorry, Dom. I love your candid comments, but this one here just doesn't work with me. Uh, I right. said this morning, instead of the draft lottery, I would like the NBA to go to a 14 playoff format with the bottom four teams 
and the winner gets the first pick. <laughs> yeah, let's don't get too creative with the NBA because Adam Silver doesn't do a good enough job trying to go ahead and take care of the NDL, the National Drama League. Two things I want to get to. Before the conference fi- finals, ESPN asked, okay, which duo are you taking? And again, I repeat, because this is interesting, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, Nikola Jokic, and Jamal Murray, and Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Well, you know what? I still think this is an interesting question, but I'm going to get your everybody's opinion, and, we're, and then we're going to end it with a non-sports topic of the week. Go ahead. The Joker and Murray. Okay. JB? Same. Best player out there right now. Jacob? Same, and I would want to, I want to do Tatum and Brown, and I probably would about 10 years ago. Because I, I love their youth. I like that everything like that. They play well, but one of them's going to be gone. So, and these guys are sticking together. So, I'm going to go with this. Okay, George. Yeah, I'm going to go the same. Denver and uh, uh, Boston high hopes. But, boy, oh, boy, they're down 3-1. It's going to be awful hard for them to, to salvage this season now. Candy? I have to go the same, although I have to say Butler is playing with an awful lot of heart these days. Awful lot of heart. Yeah, I'm going to go with Jokic and Murray, but if I had to give a close 1B, I would say the Miami tandem of Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo. Jimmy Butler, to me, is one of the most unbelievable players who could play in any era. As Jacob knows, we've alluded to this on Sunday's edition of Basket Bros. All right, Dom, Mm -hmm. now you want to declare war against me with Jane. Uh, let's go ahead and do a little bit of war here, and I don't talk about the card, okay? Candy, put down the rules as... uh, here, I'll do it. Okay. All right, Dom. Okay, here's the deal. Casey's a bum, doesn't know the meaning of the word defense. Give him some players. That would help. And had a bunch of below-average shooters jacking up threes like it was out of style. Well, guess what, Dom? I can tell you right now, Dwayne Casey didn't assemble this roster. You want to pin the blame on anybody, you do it on Troy Weaver, Dom. And, and the second point to this whole thing, Dom, okay, now I really am singling you out. Okay. When you want to go ahead and take the role of general manager – that then you're shopping for the groceries, and we can second guess a lot of those moves. But Troy Weaver is on the hot seat. The Pistons are having a hard time finding a coach, and Monty Williams actually turned him down and had a high, a lot of money there. So Dom, once again, I enjoy what you do, but certain things you need to go a little bit deeper. It's what you call the journalist part. Okay, not you, you two need a show together. Oh no, no, <laughs> well, they do. Done that. I've been there, done that, don't mind it. But there's certain things that have to be met, which I'll. Well, him and I will talk privately should that time ever exist, okay? So, you know what, Dom, that's what I have to say. We, you, you can DM me or go through the channels any way you want, but Dwayne Casey's a good basketball mind, he, and he's been around the league a long time, and I think they can use him in a good sense up in the front office, period. And it'll be interesting to see what coach ultimately lands there. All right, well, you know what, Jacob? I had this topic in mind when I thought about you. I really, really did. So here we're going to go. We're going to actually let you lead off of this one when I get it out there. Montana sure. becomes the first state to ban TikTok. TikTok, everybody. Republican Governor Greg Gianforte signed a measure that's more sweeping than any other state's attempt to curtail the social media app, which is owned by a Chinese tech company. I wouldn't know how to use TikTok. I've tried to do it, but I always think of TikTok Pro <laughs> instead of TikTok, okay? It's all right, Jacob. You know, don't think I never think about you because you're certainly I know, one of our I know. rising stores. Well, when TikTok came up, Jacob Christner was the first guy that came to mind. All right. I can't blame him. I can't. It's like I have it. I did. See, I put it. I started in the first place because you guys were at the Super Bowl, JB. And I wanted to build my own thing to be able to help for the same to get it for the next year. I want to get there badly. But I did it during that time and I'm building some people right now, you know. But other than that, TikTok, I, when I start up the app, I got dogs. I got funny dogs on the thing. I don't want to deal with the fighting. I don't want to deal with the chaos. I don't want to deal with any of that. And I'm not on other than starting my own stuff. So whatever they want to do, I, I'll just go to, uh, I'll go to StreamYard or I'll go to, not StreamYard, I'm sorry. I'll go to the, the, the tw- Twitter version of it. I'll go to the Facebook version of it, the shorts. I'll do any of that to be able to get that if it's no more TikTok. It doesn't bother me one way or the other. 
Okay. Well, all right, George. What do you think? I don't. Uh, I don't like the app. Uh, I think uh, it's uh, kind of warping the minds of a lot of people out there. I mean, well, I right. some some things are funny, but some things are very dangerous and very uh, uh, treacherous that, that 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 are suggested. And these kids out there, especially young people, are are susceptible to that. And um, I don't know about the banning. I don't know. That's probably really, really strong. But I give Montana credit. They're trying something. But, uh, yeah, I to me, it's too dangerous of, of an app when kids are imitating things and putting themselves in danger. What do you think, JB? Horrible well, no, idea. Well, wrong JB. Yeah. I don't know. You want to go? Go ahead. Go ahead, Jeremy. Okay. I think TikTok's horrible. I, I think it's full of a bunch of fake profiles and a bunch of fake people posting other people's stuff, and it, it, it's god-awful. That's just my take on it. I think it should be banned, period, and it is owned by a Chinese company. We do enough stuff for the Chinese and the Japanese and everything else. Let's let's not let our social media platforms be there, too. I agree. All right, go ahead, JB. Listen, next week they're going to ban Facebook and then Twitter and then all social media will be banned. Once we start banning things for ridiculous reasons, everything will be banned. It's, this has happened in history before. You know, you have to have a good reason to ban, ban things. If it's because people are doing stupid things on them, you can actually, you know, the companies can remove those people for terms of service violations. Once you start banning all sorts of social media, Again, you're going to start banning other companies. And who's to say, you know, what we allow, what we don't allow? Scott, we're going to ban the South Florida Tribune. Why? Because Montana don't like it. You're not allowed to be on the air there. So where does it end? Well, they did that. Then I'll tell you what. I'll go ahead and interview the coach of the Montana Grizzlies. <laughs> and they won't have an opportunity to see that one, so it doesn't matter. You're going to ban me, then I don't need the Montana Grizzlies. The only time we ever see them is in the NCAA tournament. Nobody's paying attention to the football. And if I have any people in Montana following me, although I really wonder where the numbers go anyway, but whatever. Yeah, no, all right, Candy? Let's face it. There's freedom of speech out there. Do we need to be – should we be censored like that? I agree to a certain extent. I think it'll be very hard to ban TikTok. Like, how do you enforce that? How do you... Um, yes, I am so happy that I did not grow up in a world that had social media when I was young. Do we all? Did we all do things that we probably regret that we shouldn't have? That, hey, if we had had a social media platform, we might have recorded... I can tell you as somebody that is responsible for hiring people, though, that kids don't understand that once things are out on the Internet, whatever social media platform you may use, it's out there for good unless the company takes it down. And once it's seen, it can't be unseen. So all of you that are posting anything know that an employer could see potentially see what you're putting out there and it could affect whether you get hired or not. Well, well let me say that. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, go no. ahead. No, no. no let me, let me say this part. Someone who's got, I can say this about TikTok and I can say this JB as far as anything whatsoever. I've had two of them. One hit over 11,000 and one's near a thousand as far as hits. And then I've only got like 13 of those shots. So I'm getting people seeing it's like it's the fastest way in social media to get anybody seeing you, even if I'm not short right now. As far as as far as because it's just boom, 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 boom. People watch, and it's like so. It would be tough for it would be tough if they banned it totally on someone like they that I want it for. I, I want to do this for sideline, and I want it for me, and I want to build. So it would be tough, but at the same time, what do you do? I, it's like I just say about the parents. Start parenting because these kids are acting stupid. It's time for you to take charge. Listen, it comes down to a very basic thing, and this is an issue I have in society. I had a conversation about this this afternoon. If you don't like something, don't use it. You're not obligated to go on TikTok. I am not on TikTok. That doesn't mean I think it should be banned. You know, There's no reason for it. And if there's people on TikTok doing illegal things, you know what? 
as Denzel Snipes said in the comments, it's there. Find them and arrest them. I mean, come on. You know, I mean, if you don't like a TV show, big deal. Don't watch it. If you don't like a book, don't read it. If you think that the Statue of David is pornographic, don't look at it. Right. That's your that's your right. But don't take away my right to look at it. That's the way that that's the way things should operate. Otherwise, it's just acidine. Well, I do agree on Don Derulo on one thing tonight. Candy, put it up here uh, on the screen. Okay, Don. All right. I don't have TikTok, nor will I ever. Well, I have it, but I'm not using it. I don't personally like TikTok. I, I'm able to accomplish enough on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. I don't have time to add any more social media because I'm too busy on the road networking with people at the Chamber of Commerce at Coral Springs and things like that. So I have no use for it at all. Now, are some people thing that you could go out there and say you're it's somewhat of a violation of the first amendment yeah freedom of speech but when it's stupid then it's another story so i'm not going to get into the crosshairs of that fire i don't like it uh, and i'll be interested to see if more states pick up on being able to ban it as well so is montana setting an example for what other states are going to do i don't know but i'm going to tell you one thing and this is something that's interesting that i remember in my home state of michigan when michigan introduce the seatbelt law first. I know they were one of the first ones to do it. Everybody else caught on with it. So, you well, know. Well, one thing you said, you said about uh, going to city councils and uh, pulling strengths and stuff. All six, uh, not city councils. Uh, uh, no, I, what Congress, I said is uh, I network at the Coral Springs Chain, or Chamber of Commerce. Chamber of Commerce, yeah. All six right. of us have the age where we have an understanding of what how to do that. I'm saying all, you know, of the age because we've talked to people. It's like right. this is where parenting comes into play to get them yeah. off that thing because this next generation is not going to have that same shot that we do. They're not going to have that same skill that we do. And, and oh, just I... remember, you start banning one thing, it, the next thing gets banned. And once you accept it, don't come to me and complain. You know, people in Montana, when you don't have Facebook, you don't have Twitter, you know, when you can't use a phone, a cell phone, you can't get internet on it because, you know, it's banned. Oh, well. That, that's your headache. You... It's true. Yeah, Again, true. It, it's a very interesting subject, and that's why I really want to bring it up, okay? Because there are going to be times where, you know, we, we can't, even though sports can tend to go out there and be our safety shield here to get away from stress, you still can't ignore these kinds of topics. And that's why I've begun to introduce this non-sports topic tonight, and I know it's something that will be regularly here on the sports exchange for sure. So, you know, it's and you know what's so interesting about this topic is I've got six people on here, a lot of them with a lot of interesting viewpoints, and the chat room has certainly spit out a bunch of them as well. Which all the more reasons why this this segment's here to stay. Go ahead, Jeremy. Uh, breaking news: According to Ian Rappaport, the uh, filed to ESPN, the Patriots are losing two days of voluntary organized team activities due to violation of off-season rules per league sources. Okay. All right. Well. There you go. Yeah, I'll cheat at it again. And we got breaking news, Scott, <laughs> on the scoreboard. It's three to two, Panthers with one period to go. Very good. All right, there you go, Panthers fans. It looks like you're going to have an opportunity to take a little bit of a break until the Stanley Cup Finals, and we won't be worrying uh, about a uh, four sweep situation here. It looks like it's, you know, this will be the first time that they've been to the Stanley Cup Finals since 1996 paul maurice did it and you know what panther fans as much as i know about your organization i believe john van beeswick was a goaltender there and roger right. nielsen was the coach so panther fans okay i don't have time to watch the game because i'm busy entertaining you guys but i do know enough about the history of the florida panthers and one of the favorite panthers i've ever met of all time was dennis potvin who used to be their former announcer dennis one of the classiest people so you know, more power to you. We'll see how you, we'll see what happens when we get the potential matchup that a lot of people want to see. The Florida Panthers and the Vegas Golden Knights, which I thought was a matchup probably. We were going to see one or two years ago anyways, but this one stands a chance to come to fruition. So, but that said, Candy, why don't you take us home and read the particulars? So the audio version of this show can be heard on iHeartRadio, Apple, Spotify, Google, or wherever you get your podcasts. Please hit that red subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner and 
we're striving to get to a thousand. Will you be our thousandth subscriber? And please visit us on www.southfloridatribune.com. If you want to be a guest possibly on this show or send us topic ideas, ideas you can email us at southfloridatribune at gmail.com. The other thing is if you want to advertise or if you want to sponsor a show, call Scott, 954-304-4941 or email us at southfloridatribune at gmail.com. Again, please hit that red subscribe button. Like, share the broadcast so all of your friends can see it and enjoy it. And also, in a couple of minutes, hop on over to Sideline Sports to Confidential. Good stuff. And we are live, by the way, on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. And if you ever have any guest ideas, feel free to email them. It's all for tribute at gmail.com or in the chat. All right, with that said, I know JV and Jacob got to get going. So go ahead, JV, let everybody know how they get a hold of you. Thanks, Tom. JB underscore the program on Twitter, uh, Sideline Sports with Dave DeRoche on the NFL Alumni Network and DBTV. Um, confidential coming on in about five, uh, four minutes. I'm going to jump off, guys, so I can go get ready, but great show. Enjoyed it. And as usual, Scott, great job, man. Thank you, JB. Have a great show tonight. I, I know Thank you, you will. Thank you, JB. All right, Thanks, you're not done yet, Jacob, uh, until you give your exit strategy the right yeah, way. Oh, yeah, I got, I got enough of that. Um, Sunday night's basket bros, Monday night's uh, pundit views. This, that was um, that, that was gone this week because I was on Inside the Pigskin, which was very, very nice. I'll be back next week with i um, going to do an Ask Jake deal, and i got a few guests going ahead. Uh, Tuesday night's nothing. Wednesday night's three of these, pundits, pundit, the sports exchange, then confidential coming up. Working on Thursday, working on the, getting yin and yang back on Thursday. Fridays, I am the bench guy that uh, I'm the bench guy that's needed when they need it on Gauntlet. And then I'm also, I've also got, I'm also um, published on the Inscriber and on South Florida Tribune. And I got a few other things going on. So we had a great doubleheader tonight between Pundits, Pundit and Sports Exchange. I, I enjoy working with Jacob on basket bros as well as pundits fun and anything else that he's going to be involved in in the future which i know jacob will be involved so jacob i know you gotta head over to confidential i believe you're doing that tonight is that correct yes i am and george i, I remember that we may that may need a place next week when i want you <laughs> okay thank you all you right well you. have a great show jacob take care everybody. Right. so meanwhile a couple of last things i want to talk about our website www.southfloridatribune.com you can also find me on Twitter at Tribune South. So great show tonight. I know we covered a lot of interesting topics tonight. So on behalf of George Icorn, J.B. Ellis, Jacob Krishner, Jeremy, Smoke and Jeremy B., and Candy Ebling came in and joined us tonight. My name is Scott Morgan, Roth of the Motor City Madmouth. Thank you for joining us on this edition of the Sports Exchange. A lot of great programs in the works, so stay tuned for updates. Good night, everybody. Well, Jeremy, how can we get a hold of you? Oh, right. How are we going to? Sorry, Jeremy. Yeah, Kneecap Bite with Smoking Jeremy B is my channel. I'm also on the South Florida Tribune channel whenever Scott needs me. I'm also found on the SouthFloridaTribune.com where you can find my writings next to this guy that's next to me over here, George Icorn, and also under that guy there who's our publisher, Scott Morganroth. And thanks to the lovely lady to my upper right, <laughs> They all get, to, our stories all get posted in a timely manner. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much for everything you guys do. It's been a pleasure to be a part of this program. It's been a pleasure to be a part of every program. But I do shows Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, soon to be Thursdays, Fridays, every other Saturday, and soon Sundays. Yeah. In fact, you know, I go out there and mention, sorry for the inadvertent omission my mind is working nine million miles an hour so go ahead why don't you kind of clue people in a little bit about what you and i are up to in a couple of weeks scott and i are going to do a show and it's going to be are we going with your name or my name well right now i'll tbd it's to be <laughs> determined it'll either be the teacher and the student or the mentor and the pupil now we're talking about professor the professor <laughs> and the student don't forget the professor here <laughs> professor oh, yeah. the professor now 
Well, no, it's always been a professor. <laughs> I thought he said teacher and student to begin well, with. Well, that was initially I before I changed it. I'm acting like Brett Favre here, waffling a little bit. And oh, then, okay. I, I, I don't want to play in the division like again, actors. but then I get traded to the Minnesota Vikings. I get it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, professor and the student is preferred choice. We'll find out how it plays out in a couple of weeks. So, meanwhile, there's a man to my left that has a book to talk about. So, go ahead and talk about it, Mr. Eichhorn. Okay, Detroit sports broadcasters on the air. Scott's in the book. Jeremy, you would be in the book if I made one today, okay? And Candy, awesome. too. <laughs> if I do a second edition. But the book's available with a link uh, from the South Florida Tribune at the end of my column. And also, uh, you can reach me at gicorn at yahoo.com or uh, Twitter at sandgsports99. And also, I'm available on LinkedIn under my name. So, good to be part of the show tonight. Glad to have you, George. I'm Candy. thinking about. Oh wait, I, I'm thinking about taking on a writing project myself. I talked to Scott about it earlier. I'm going to put it out there. Forty-two years and exercises fertility as a Lions fan. Oh yeah. Sometimes <laughs> last three years have been good, but the first four, last, but the forty-two before that, not so much. <laughs> Sometimes ideas like that actually make the best books, believe it or not. So, so that's okay. Uh, I, I'm always intrigued by the things that you're involved in. And you said, and you and I are going to be doing something on Friday and Sundays. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, Friday nights at eight and Sundays at two until the season begins. We are going to be interviewing former pro athletes and coaches through Let's Talk Sports, which is now a part of Sideline Sports as well. Very good. Make sure we like to make sure no stone is unturned. All right, Candy, what do you got left for us? So I just want to say. Let's say a big shout out to Scott Motor City Morgan Roth because he puts together all of these broadcasts. He got all of the topic ideas. He gets all of the guests on, whether they're his usual regulars or whether they're people from outside in the chamber, if they're outside writers, if they're entrepreneurs, if they're sports people, you have to go check our channel, to see what... They interviewed Tori Harmon this week. He's a Kansas City Chiefs coach going to be this year. You got to check him out. You got to listen to our channel. Listen to Mel Favre Jr. He used to play in the NFL. What it's like to be playing in the NFL. What it's like to be a spectator after the fact. Go check out our channel and check out our videos. You will not be disappointed. Thanks, Candy. Thanks, George. Thanks, Jeremy. Thank you. I appreciate it. So on, on behalf of, once again, Candy Ebling, George Eichhorn, Smoking Jeremy B., J.B. Ellis, and Jacob Crisser, my name is Scott Morinroth. Thank you for joining us on this edition of the Sports Exchange. We'll have more episodes in the pipeline next week. However, we will not be broadcasting on Memorial Day. Candy Ebling and I have some baseball projects to do up in Daytona Beach with the Tortugas. So good night, everybody. Thank you.